He let it become a part of his being, of who he was. Through his life, through his study, through his prayer. He was called a joyful friar because he was so overwhelmed by the great mystery of God's love for him and for all of humanity that he couldn't keep it to himself. You know, sometimes when you hear something, when you know something that's so wonderful, you have to share it with everybody else. Like I was sharing before Mass, I have a great niece today who was born six hours ago, little Claire. So, you know, it happens we have a, a new baby in the family, we have to share it with everybody else. It's a great joy. So Dominic went out and proclaimed this great mystery in churches and highways and byways throughout Europe, and he knew he couldn't do this by himself, so he gathered together brothers and sisters to do the same, to go out and by preaching and prayer and community and study to let everyone know about the great mystery of God's love and salvation. And this was at a time when learning in Europe was at a very low ebb. People didn't have Bibles. People didn't have books. It was 300 years before Gutenberg, and books were rare and very expensive. And most people were illiterate. So according to the great tradition, Mary gave Dominic the rosary as a prayer that he could pray anywhere and that anyone could pray. You didn't have to read a book to be able to say the rosary. You didn't have to look up verses in your Bible. You could pray while you were on the road, which is why we still wear the rosary as part of our habit. So it's always there with us, reminding us and prompting us to pray. It's a wonderful story and a wonderful way that Mary has provided this great reminder of the mystery of God's love for us and for people everywhere. So today, too, as we celebrate 177 years at St. Peter, as we celebrate Our Lady of the Rosary, we surround ourselves in this church, in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our study, with the mystery of the Rosary. As we contemplate the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, freely given out of love for all of us to conquer sin and death once and for all. A love so great and poured out for us that we could be with God both in this life and especially in the world to come. We need to proclaim this great message and mystery wherever we go to near and far. One of the great stories of Dominic is where he sat all night long with a tavern keeper to convert him. So if you see us in taverns, now you'll know why. Surprisingly, many people, you think, well, you know, everybody knows the great story of God's love for us through Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? They don't these days. A lot of people don't. It's no surprise to you that a lot of people don't go to church and haven't been raised in any faith tradition at all. What a tragedy, what a tragedy, but true. So maybe there's somebody in our life who needs to know the good news. You know there are people too, you know this too, people who don't believe that anyone loves them. I said this recently to somebody. I said, well, God loves you, and he said, well, maybe. I said, not maybe. It's true. God does love you. And he looked at me with this kind of surprised look on his face. Maybe he'd never heard that before. So reach out, as Jesus did, 
to those who are searching, to those who are seeking, to those who are trying to find meaning in their lives, to the poor, to those who are sick, to those who suffer, to those who mourn, to those who live their lives on the margins of society. For those who want desperately to believe in something but don't know what it is, well, we do. It's not just for us, but for us to share with everyone. So today, I hope all of our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord, that the Lord has done great things for us all. And like Mary, Dominic, and all our great saints, let this mystery encompass and immerse itself in all of us so that we may be so joyful that we go out and proclaim it to the world. Let us stand and with one voice profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, Substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to hear and answer our prayers, in confidence we bring these needs to our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, Martin, our bishop, members of the Dominican family, especially Friar Bruno, Master of the Order, Friar Tom, our Provincial, and their councils. May they always preach the good news of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to religious life, especially for our southern Dominican province, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And thanksgiving for our parish on its anniversary. May we continue to be blessed and strengthened for service to others, especially the less fortunate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern the nations, may they strive for peace, justice, and mercy for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick, homebound, and hospitalized especially Father Paul Watkins, for military personnel and civilians in harm's way, refugees, and all affected by natural disasters. And these loved ones we now name aloud. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this anniversary of our founding, we remember those who worshiped before us, 
in this holy place. For all who have died, especially Teeny Podesta, mother of Beth and Jesse Blumenfeld, Eugene and Martha Podesta, and for those loved ones we now name aloud. For them, we pray to the Lord. For our personal intentions, those of the friends of St. Peter's and the patrons of St. Martin's Shrine, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, giver of every good gift, hear and answer the prayers of your faithful this day, for we offer them to you in thanksgiving through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Offertory Hymn is number 1009, Sing of Mary. In your 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightly conformed to these offerings we bring, and so honor the mysteries of your only begotten Son, as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For on this feast, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we praise, bless, and proclaim your name. Consenting to the divine word, Mary became the mother of God. Embracing your saving will, she became the handmaid of the Lord. Devoting herself to the life and work of your Son, Mary cooperated in the mystery of redemption. And because of this, she stands before us, mother and model of the church. Now gathered by the Spirit, with one voice we join with Mary and all the saints in their triumphant hymn of praise. <laughs> rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Peter and Paul, Dominic, Martin de Porres, Catherine of Siena, Rose of Lima, Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Love. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not. at bed. 
let us pray. Lord our God, in this Eucharist we have proclaimed the death and resurrection of Christ. As we ponder these same mysteries in the rosary, help us to proclaim them to your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The second collection, now being taken, is to support our Dominican students. Tomorrow evening, beginning at 6 p.m., the Dominican Gala will take place at the University Club. More details are in your bulletin about this important event. This Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., young adults will, will sponsor an hour of adoration, and the Sacrament of Reconciliation will also be available. Bible study and RCIA will also meet, and all are welcome. During October, the month dedicated to Our Lady of the Rosary, you are invited to pray for peace, and rosaries are available in the back welcome corner. Our greeter this evening is Sandra Douglas, who will be in the back welcome corner. If you are a first-time visitor, please stop by to receive a gift from our parish. Our liturgy will conclude this evening with the hymn, Hail Holy Queen, printed in your bulletin. Do we have any visitors and newcomers among us this evening? If so, please raise your hand. I promise I, I never ask you to do anything the first time you raise your hand. Now, if you show up a second time, I will start asking for you to help with things. Uh, for all of you who are visiting, welcome to St. Peter. For those who uh, may be new to the Memphis area or looking for a new faith community, I invite you to consider joining St. Peter Parish here in downtown Memphis. And if you're just passing through, St. Peter will be your home the next time you visit. So thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for God's blessing. Born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Son of God redeemed the human race. May he enrich you with his blessings. You received the author of life through Mary. May you always rejoice in her loving care. You have come to rejoice at Mary's feast. May you be filled with the joy of the Spirit and the gifts of eternal life. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh, 
cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim, heaven and 